ask you, obviously you had a, a you know, a, a fairly well established and pretty strong professional rugby playing career as a, as a player for Wasps, Harlequins and England Sevens and what have you. Um, and in uh, 03, 04, when the time sort of came to, to, to hang up the boots, so to speak, um, you went straight into coaching. And I just wanted to look at, yeah, lots of people in business all the time ex- experience that, like being an expert and then having to manage teams. Like how difficult was that transition from being a player to then being a coach? Yeah, I mean, I, I was probably quite fortunate as well because I was part of, I'm that old, I was part of the mob that bridged amateur rugby and professional rugby. So I was actually always a chartered surveyor by, by, by trade. So I, 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 when rugby went professional in 95, 96, I was just finishing my qualification to become a chartered surveyor. So rather than become a full-time pro, I made sure I finished that qualification. Uh, and, you know, I was very fortunate to work for a company at the time called uh, DTZ. And funny enough, throughout my professional playing career, um, when all the boys used to finish at the end of the day and go and play PlayStation or, or, or go down Nando's as it was, I would get my suit on and go into work and continue to, to work and, and develop myself away from rugby, um, which at the time I kind of used to kick myself sometimes that the boys would be off having fun. But but now when I look back, it was probably one of the smartest things I did do. So when the end did come, which was kind of five or six years later, it was on my terms because I didn't need to chase another contract. Um, I could have gone abroad. I could have continued playing somewhere else, but I just felt I'd achieved all I could achieve in rugby. I mean, I would love to have achieved more, but the fact of the matter is I'd looked at the man in the mirror and I, and I didn't really want to do any more. So I'm, I made that decision to, to, to go back into the, into the professional world of surveying, you know, my own volition, which was a, a fantastic choice when I look back. You know, and a great, a great, um, a great choice to be able to have. Um, and you know, I, I often tell players now, let's make sure you you're planning for tomorrow whilst you're you're enjoying today. Uh, and I actually had started my coaching three or four years earlier as well, believe it or not. So yeah. I was again a vocational coach when I when I did my ACL. Um, I I needed something to keep me active alongside work and rehabbing to keep the mind where it needed to be. And I, I started to, to explore coaching at the grassroots club I played as a young man or a young boy yeah. and, uh, and, and started there and, and moved through. And, you know, when I, when I finished with, um, with Wasps and I was going back into the property world, it was, it was a strange chain of events that I ended up being involved with England. And it was linked more with frustrations when I was there as a player where I was like, You've either got to do something about yourself, or you've got to shut up and and move on. So it was it was an interesting time for me um, that whole kind of two thousand and one two thousand and two season, which is when I started to get heavily involved with the England Sevens coaching, um, along with playing at Wasp and restarting my surveying career. Mm-hmm. 